Hey, I'm Eric Perkins. And I'm Jamie Perkins. We're the Perkins Builder Brothers and we've been building custom homes for 25 years. Here's a few tools that we wish we would have bought a long time before we actually bought them. And we love tools here. We've been buying yeah. tools relentlessly, I think, for the last 15 years. But actually, we started out using only very basic tools. Yeah, like a skill saw or a circular saw, ladders, hammers, and that was about it. We could build an entire house. But things have changed, so let's get into our list. This wasn't <laughs> planned. It just happened. Yeah, right. <laughs> First on our list of tools that we wish we would have bought a long time before we bought them is a positive placement nailer. And this is a pneumatic one, and it looks like a regular framing nail gun, but it's not. It's not, it has a very special talent. That talent is that it can shoot a nail through a hole that's only an eighth of an inch without actually hitting the face of the nail plate. And you just align the pointed tip up with the hole in the hanger, bam, pull the trigger. Yeah. And believe it or not, it'll shoot the nail right in the hole, and that's the whole positive placement. Somebody asked me, why did we wait so long to buy one of these? And really, I think it was just the $300 price tag, which is about the same price as any other quality nail gun. So uh, I can say that it has sped us up, though, yeah. so much. You can live without it, but if you are living without it, likely you'll take a lot longer and you're gonna smash your fingers with those little tiny hanger nails. Let's, let's look at what these nails look like. Yeah, that's that might be the best thing is that you probably won't be hitting your fingers as much. Yeah, and so if you don't have one of these, RR Builds Kyle had a good tip to not hit your fingers. If you buy the strips instead of the hand drive, twist one to the side, put it in the hole, and wow. hit it like that. If you don't have one, but get one. That's the bottom line. Let's move on. All right. You wanna know why I love that positive placement nailer? Sure. Right there, buddy. <laughs> See that? I slam my fingers so hard putting in Joyce hangers. Yeah. Your knuckle is permanently. <laughs> I know, look at that thing. And that How did was... you hit your knuckle though? You're I don't know, dude. <laughs> okay. Tool number two, the gecko siding gauges. And this was a tool we held off until just recently when Johnny Brook, one of our friends, really recommended them and we just gave in and they weren't that expensive. I think like 60 bucks for a set. What they do is help you install siding, lap siding, very quickly and easily by holding the board for you and holding it at the correct reveal so that you don't have to mark layout on the wall of where your siding goes. What do you think, Jason? I think they're the best thing in the world. <laughs> like since sliced bread, they're the best thing. He was so ticked we didn't have them earlier. They what are, do you think? They are pretty good, I will say. I actually really like them. I was the most resistant and hesitant to try them because of my fear of the potential for cumulative error, which means you base one thing on the on the last thing and then that gets off a little bit and then you base your next thing on that one, which may have been off a little which bit. Which could happen on lap siding row after row. It you could, could happen. Get, it could, and it has happened one time to us, but for the most part, using these gecko siding gauges has sped up our siding process by like 100% or maybe 200%. It's really fast. It's amazingly it's nice. faster. I'd really recommend them. There's a link to those in the video description. We're gonna do a little bonus round on the tools. Oh, yeah. Got my tool belt on and I've got two little accessories that kind of help me stay organized uh, on the job site. One of them is this fast cap magnet and I have all my bits on it. Problem with bits though is that even with a thing like this, I don't know if you can see that, I can't really see that very good, so I'm always doing this, trying to see what I have. They don't come in and out easy. And if you put the bits down in one of your pouches, you definitely don't know what bits you have unless you pull everything out of your pouch and kind of fish through it. So this yeah. is nice. I know exactly what I have. I can see it easily. And surprisingly, these don't fall off very easily. This is a really strong magnet. I gotta say, to my surprise, this little bit holder has actually generated more interest in the comment section than almost any other thing that we've shown on the channel. It would. It'd be great if the tool belt came with one of these already installed on it. So my second little accessory here is this Pencil Pole Pro by, uh, let's see who makes this, C.H. Hansen. And I think Ray or Jono or somebody bought this for me. Who was it? You, Ray bought it for me, thank you Ray. So I was constantly misplacing my pencil and then borrowing everyone else's pencil and then subsequently <laughs> misplacing their pencil. So nobody had a pencil. So maybe this was a joke, but it, it actually turned out to be great uh, once I actually remembered that it was there. So basically it's on a lanyard, you use your pencil, it's not pulling back too hard, it's about right. And when you're done, you just let go of it and it's let right go. back where it was. This has been actually really nice. So 
bonus round, I'd recommend those if you do a lot of building. What do you guys say about those, James? Uh, I haven't uh, jumped on the boat yet. <laughs> Or whatever with this, uh, Ray did get me one. Thank you, Ray. I know it looks dorky. I, I mean, I'll give it that. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm considering trying it. I really am. It's in the truck. No, you're not. I'll bring it. No. I bring it to work every day. So you don't have either one of these. I know. No. Well, I, nobody got me one of those, and uh, and Ray got me this. But uh, well, these are probably a combined ten dollars. Right. If you wanted to buy some yourself, I'm saving my money. All right. To get one. <laughs> okay. This video is brought to you by All Form, which is Helix Birch's sister brand of sofas and chairs that are American made and easy to assemble. They're modular so you can customize them to work well in any space. Plus they're scratch and stain resistant and really comfortable too. Time for our new couch, bud. Are we supposed to eat on the couch? <laughs> Seems now. like I've said that before. It's old now. <laughs> Now more than ever, it's important to make the most of your time at home, and I personally spend a lot of time working at home making these videos. But no matter how you spend your downtime, your sofa is an integral part of your home, which is why I'm super excited to partner with Allform for this video. With Allform, you can personalize your sofa to your space and your style by creating over 500 plus unique combinations with seat numbers, corners, chases, and ottomans. Based on the space I have here, I got a four seat sofa with a chase and light gray. Our new sofa will give us the same amount of seating as both of our old bulky pieces of furniture. This is the chase lounge part where you lay out. We can put it on that end or this end. What do you want? This end. This end? This end. All right. We're go on legs, Chase. You can put your all form sofa together in as little as 15 minutes. Setup is easy with completely tool free assembly. Because all form ships direct to the customer, they're able to use really premium materials at a reasonable price for you. And it's easy to buy online. Shipping is fast and free, so you're not waiting around forever for a delivery. And they have a 100 day trial, so you'll get more than three months to make sure you love it. If you don't, they'll pick it up and you'll get a full refund. I love my all form sofa, and I think you would too. So if you're looking for some new seating, check out all form. Visit the link below or go to allforum.com slash Perkins for 20% off the sofa of your choice. See that? Not to be confused with a chase cushion or a chase lounge. Chase. Chase. Tool number three on our list. Can you guess what it is? It's an airless paint sprayer and a commercial quality airless paint sprayer is what we ended up getting. We waited way too long to buy these. We did. Let me tell you the story about why we bought one to start with. We had to paint the underside of a carport ceiling that was outside. It was framing That's and it fun. was, uh, you know, all sides of the joists hanging down with plywood underneath with tons of shingle nails popping through. And I thought about painting that with a brush or something. And uh, I couldn't, I couldn't make sense of actually doing that. So we bought a sprayer. Yeah. And these have saved us tons of time and tons of money. We can do our own painting for the most part. We spray all the primer on the inside of our houses. If the inside is one color, we'll spray that. We spray all the ceilings. And this has just saved us a lot of time and a lot of money. And I think these were about 2000 ish dollars each, which is a lot of money if you're not gonna use it regularly. But once you own one, you're gonna use it regularly, is yeah. what I would say. Think about trying to paint a ceiling with a roller and have it dry and ice without getting any lines. It's difficult. I don't know if you can do it. Maybe somebody can do it. I can't do it. So this has been a great purchase for us. You may not want to paint, but for us, it makes sense to just get it done and save the money. A little pro tip. If you do buy one of these, you need to do the maintenance, which is cleaning all the filters. There's one in the handle. There's another one in the body of this thing. And also you have to oil it pretty much every time you use it. There's a little spot where you drop oil in right here that keeps the piston lubricated. Uh, or else they won't last as long as you want. You got anything else on that? Yeah, I used one for about two years until I realized that there was a filter in the handle because <laughs> it actually got so restricted and uh, clogged up, it wouldn't spray anymore. And I was like, what is going on? That's when I took the handle apart and I realized the filter was there and it had about 1% of the filter. It was amazing there was, was clear. anything coming through that filter. Yeah, it did spray. Pro tip. Could we talk about that oil again? Yeah, so, you you're supposed to oil them? What? <laughs> yes. So, yeah. who's in charge of cleaning this one last is what I want to know. <laughs> These what things have been used a thousand times. Is that you? I don't touch those things. I can tell you don't touch them. Somebody didn't touch it. Tool number four, specialty saws. And here we have two of them. We've got the giant beam saw that uses this 
16 and 5 16 diameter blade, which is pretty scary looking. That's actually. fun to look at though, isn't it? It is. I like it. I hang <laughs> it on the wall actually. Um, and this 12 inch concrete or masonry saw. And these are two tools that we did not have until a couple years ago because you can do what they do with other tools and we just sort of made do. Uh, that the angle grinder can do what this does or you can put a masonry blade in a regular circular saw and it'll kind of do this but this will cut deeper and it has a lot more power and it's just easier to hold because of the design of the saw the it reason is. we went with a electric one i'll let you explain that we got this electric one with a power cord instead of a motor because they are a lot cheaper and we almost always have power on site or we have generators to bring so how much was this uh, this is only like 150 bucks. This so one. it's a Evolution brand. Just for reference, if you buy a gas-powered one, you're probably looking at more like a thousand bucks. This is not as noisy either. Yeah, it is way quieter. And a lot of times we need to cut relief cuts in a basement, which is enclosed, and we don't want the fumes of a gas-powered tool inside of there. Um, carbon monoxide poisoning is a thing. So all reasons we bought the electric. And this guy, you can do what it does by cutting on all sides of a bigger beam with a regular circular saw, seven and a quarter. But if you build a lot of decks, this thing will chop through six by sixes mm -hmm. in one shot super fast and greatly increase the speed of building yeah. decks. I wanna say the best thing that this does for us is when you have to do 45 degree Makes angle braces like men. out of, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> uh, when you cut 45 degree braces out of six by six material, this thing, you can just draw a line across it in just one cut. So if you do that with a regular skill saw, you have to have two saws, one set to 90 degrees and one set to 45, and hope all your lines line up, and they won't because the posts aren't square, and then finish it with a hand saw. This thing, boom, slice and dice. Yep. And this nice. is expensive as well. I think about 800 bucks for one of these. Yep. But we are not sorry that we bought it. Well, actually, I did a little horse trading for this one. Oh. So I didn't actually pay any money for it. Okay. So that's why we got it. Good to know. Yep. Tool number five on our list is a rotary laser. And this one is a Geomax, which has been the best one I've ever owned. This will help you to get your foundation in level, which is super important when you're building a home. Here's what we used to use a long time ago. This is a builder's site level. I think, uh, would you say who used to use one like I think this? Christopher Columbus. Around the room <laughs> yeah, Columbus. It's got a little bubble level in there. It's really frustrating to get it you leveled. You have to manually level this thing, sight through it, then it takes two people. Yeah, that's the worst part is you have to have two people. One to look through the yep. lens and one to hold a tape measure. Yep. And so this is automatically leveling up to five degrees. It will shoot lines that are out of level on purpose if you want to do grading for water to run off. It also has a remote control. And the best part about this one compared with other smaller type line lasers is it has a reader that will read the laser line even if it's too bright outside to see the laser line. And that's the big difference between a big rotary laser and just a like Bosch type line laser that we also mm -hmm. have. This one also has a really wide reader, which means that you can be up and down a lot from the laser line and it's telling you still how much up and down you are, which is really important. What I like is that even if you don't know how to use this, you pull it out on the job site and you look like a pro. Yeah, You true. know, people are like, whoa, how do you, whoa, oh yeah. man. So this is a really important tool. Um, it makes things faster. It makes your whole house really level without too much work. This is a must have if you're gonna get serious about construction. One thing I am gonna pull out of the box here is this plumb bob. That would be really nice to have in my tool belt for a lot of things. Well, it belongs right here in the case with the, uh, the build level. Yeah, but we don't use that, so. Right, but actually I was thinking, <laughs> this has a crosshair in it, and I bet you I could mount this to my little 22. And, Go for it, and, that's all it's good for. <laughs> oh man, this thing will be awesome. The plumb bob is more valuable to us than this thing at this point. Okay, so A, you don't even normally use a hammer, <laughs> but now you think you're gonna use a plumb bob? Yeah. For what? Uh, like when we were leveling down from the string line, plumbing down with the with the level, you could have just used that thing. Point. Maybe, maybe you're gonna use it to try to find your lunch or something. <laughs> <laughs> the last tool on our list, cordless nailers. And we've got a framing nailer and a finish nailer here. Obviously, you don't have to drag an airline around. That's the huge advantage. You do have to have charged batteries and they don't shoot quite as fast as a pneumatic nailer. 
but you don't have to drag an airline around. So even if you're not gonna use these in all situations, they're really nice to have, especially a finished nailer, you don't have to drag an air hose through a finished house, potentially marring up drywall corners or getting mud if there's mud on your airline. So these have been a massive improvement for us and I wish we would have got them sooner. I agree, I actually really like them too. I was again more hesitant to transition uh, we still keep an air nailer in the truck, but it doesn't come out much, <laughs> hardly ever. So with that said, here's our recommendations if you're looking to buy a battery powered or cordless nailer. For the 18 gauge nailer, I really like the Milwaukee Fuel. It works really well. Uh, it's, it's nice and narrow, it can get into most of the places you need to do trim work. I do not like the Milwaukee 16 gauge nailer. I think it's kind of clunky. Uh, what do you think about the framing nailers? Well. I think the Dewalt and the Milwaukee and the pass load are all good, but my favorite is the pass load because it's the lightest, it jams the least, and uh, it loads really easy. Yeah, and it is considerably lighter than the Dewalt or the Milwaukee, but you do have to have gas cartridges or fuel cartridges. The, it's not completely battery operated. It uses battery and fuel. Uh, this one does tend to jam sometimes, and the Milwaukee never jams, but it's super heavy like, I don't know how much heavier, but noticeably heavier than the DeWalt. It's time to wrap it up, but I gotta say, there is one downside to having all these fantastic tools. You know what it is? I do. All yeah. right, well, I'll tell <laughs> everybody <know>. else. <laughs> the problem is, if your buddies find out that you have all these tools, they're gonna call you because they wanna borrow them because they haven't bought them yet. And why would you buy them when you can just call your buddy and- I'm not sure why you and, would. And, uh, you know, take theirs to the job, smash it up. Yeah, can I actually borrow that concrete saw? Mm. Thanks for checking out our video today. <laughs> I'm going to try to get a link to most of these items in our description. Make sure to get subscribed if you haven't already. And give our video a thumbs up. It really does help us on YouTube. Have a great day. No, seriously, can I, can I borrow this all? It's, yeah, go ahead. Right, thanks, just appreciate it. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end of our video. And we've had so many requests for a tool belt setup that I'm actually going to do it. You guys, you got me to do it. So. Uh, I'm wearing an El Chapo Diamondback rig, which I like. It is expensive. I think about 500 bucks with the setup I've got, which is more than you'd want to pay if you're not an everyday builder like I am. So let's start up top. I already showed you guys the little gadgets I got for my bits and my pencil. And so let's start on the right side. I've got a Stiletto TB2. I think that stands for tie bone. It's a full titanium hammer with a replaceable head, which I've never replaced. I do really like this hammer. Um, also over here, I carry just a utility knife, nail punches, and some of my longer ex bits right here. That's a number two square. I do carry a lightweight pair of needle nose kind of things just for bending nails over and breaking them. If I do get in that situation, I've got a special pouch clipped onto my pouch for a chisel, and that's a one inch chisel. Not looking great. Some surprises over here. We've got a LED headlamp. Is it dead? No, it works. Dead lamp. And yeah. In case I get into like a crawl space or something, I can't see. I've also got a Craftsman laser tape measure, which I hardly ever use because I always forget that I have it. But if you needed to measure something like up to a ceiling that you couldn't get to, that'll go up to 65 feet. And I've got some other various bits along with an extension bit with a drill bit on it mm. that I just <clears> use <throat> for random stuff. Is that mine? It might be yours. It looks a lot like <laughs> mine. All this stuff might be other people's <clears throat> stuff. <laughs> So on the back here, I've always got my uh, drill or an impact. Right now I've got the drill, which this is a heavy setup with the five amp hour battery. We use a lot of the T25 uh, type screws for structural type things and uh, GRKs is what we like to use. So I've got the T25 and I always keep that here. It really balances the belt, I feel like. Mm. If I don't have that on, I feel like I'm, I'm tipping. And with oh, it on- no. Don't be tipping. I feel like I'm, I'm good, so that down i think that's everything there um left side i've got a fat max 25 in it it kind of doesn't come out of there easy uh some of the guys have taken the clip off so that it slides in and out a little easier with gloves on i'll say it's near impossible to get it in and out mm. and then on down uh, one of my favorite tools of course the speed square use this for everything and if it's not in my belt i, I literally stop working and go look take for someone it. else's you or yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> i take that's someone what else's. i would do too uh, also on this side i always carry a torpedo 
just for, and this is not for making sure things are perfect but just to kind of generally say it's good if you're setting up your first bucket scaffold yeah you clip it you're on like man is this pretty close or what yeah you can clip that on and see you know i'm not going crazy so that's good to have it's magnetic and it's probably pretty cheap an empire whatever that is um also over here I've got a cat's paw, which is a really good tool to have if you're doing any kind of framing. If you're gonna make mistakes, you gotta pull the nails. Um, and then in here, I just run whatever kind of kind of longer, bigger fastener I have. That's actually Jason's. I've got Pry your bar, go figure. At, all my guys have these little sweet little, you know, pry a little bit here and there. That, they're really nice for a lot of stuff. Um, oh, we missed over here. I do like to carry a Sharpie. Oh yeah, you gotta have sharpies. Of course, sharpies. my pencil is and up. You got your other bits right there. Yeah, a you longer your, bits. Uh, pull out that one bit with the red and yellow. See, this is the problem. That's, I can't. Oh that's, yeah, that's the best little bit. Okay, there. so this is uh, five sixteenths or a quarter nut driver. Yeah, show them how it works. So you just and it's you pull it okay. apart, and you got a quarter on one side, five sixteenths on the other, but it's interchangeable. Yeah. So I've got two nut drivers, and that's made by Malco. Malco. And those are the best because you can actually get the little pieces of metal off of the magnet. Yeah. And you pull it out. That's the problem. Hey, whose tool belt thing is this, bud? Hey, sorry. I was just trying to, you know, <laughs> add a little bit for the folks. No, no, no. That's no. good. I'm just you kidding. Know, no, I'll shut up now. No, no I'll I'm be kidding. quiet. No, I don't um, need to talk. I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk at all. Um, I think that's about it. I'm going to go with the rest of my gear here. I've got these Maverick safety glasses. They have a shielded side and uh, they're not prescription. A lot of people have asked me. I just think they're comfortable and I think they look cooler than most safety glasses to kind of have a little style. Yeah, you don't know how many people have answered comments about those glasses. Yeah. What kind of glasses are they? Yeah, they're safety glasses. And the first pair of these I had, I was running at Lake Junaluska and at five in the morning in the dark, I found a pair on the road and I picked them up thinking they were someone's prescription glasses and I was gonna put them in my truck when I got home. I was like, oh, those are safety glasses. I looked them up online and I bought like 12 pair. I bought a pack of 12 pair because I liked them. So that's how, Started wearing those. Good story. Yeah, um, I'm using Elgin ear protection slash Bluetooth uh, right there, and I like those. They sent us these, just full disclosure. Uh, but I do like them. I've got the the less noise blocking option because with the other, uh, totally like uh, like like this, and I couldn't hear anything. Like mm. it was so good that I couldn't even hear. How about that? So they're Bluetooth. They're great. Uh, I've got full True Work gear. I really like the True Work gear. It's all, it's all stretch, but it's tough. I've never had a problem like anything tearing. It's comfortable. It's got pockets. My favorite pocket is that. And you've mm -hmm. got my cell phone, but my cell phone usually goes right there. That's a really important thing for being a contractor, and especially a guy that films videos. Um, I've got Brunt boots, and those are too mm -hmm. hot for summer. They're great in the winter. Is that it? Head to toe? Let Jamie talk. Let no, Jamie I don't talk. want to talk. We already went over that. I don't. <laughs> what did I miss? Talking. I don't know. I so, don't know. I think I think that's about it. Yeah, and so there's nothing super special about this. I don't think. Um, just kind of mostly standard stuff for doing let's, framing. Let's see your hammer holder. That is kind of unique. Uh, the, this the hammer holder. Yeah, and I do like this. Yeah, it turn does in the sun a little bit. Turn around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it does keep the hammer from slapping against your leg. Kind of if you jump down off something yeah. in it. So it's like a sleeve. Yeah, and at points I've had to wrap like electrical tape to kind of get this to go in there a little easier. They're really good on wooden it's hammers. Got the rubber handle. Yeah, so the rubber handle, I think it's maybe just worn in now, like it's loosened up, it, it slides in easy enough one-handed, but it does hold the hammer well. I've never had it, like on the other ones, sometimes they'll flip yeah. and kind of halfway fall out. Yeah. So that's nice, I do like that. Oh, one last thing, and I don't have a gun on me, but I do have this hook right here. Okay. Gun hook. Gun hook. And uh like nail gun? Yeah, like I'll hook the nail gun right there. Oh, and in the back, one last thing. Are you done yet? I've got a pouch with my chalk line. Yep, there it is. Uh, and that's a Tajima. And those have really nice, thin, sharp line. And they have their own chalk. Yep. Tajima chalk. And I don't know. They just work really nice. I like them because it has a lock. Yeah, it, it does. It has a little lock. Yeah, so if you need... Well, it actually works as a plumb bob, too. Yep, you can lock so it. Lock it, and then you can it's hang got it by the kind string. Kind of a point, and you can. And it doesn't just like unreal all the yeah. way to the ground. You can do that, and you'll never get it pulled back up. Yeah. So they make all kinds of these. Uh, I run that in the back because I don't need it all the time, but I need it every day. So it's a little harder to get to back here. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, but it's worth having on my belt. I see a lot of people run their tape measure straight back. Jono's got something. 
they also make replaceable parts for those chalk boxes. Yes, <laughs> yes, mine broke, that's right. That was nice. Jono just replaced the crank on his Tajima um, because it was broken. So uh, that's he has a nice, the nice like he has the like alloy metal case. It is. One. It's white. Yeah, his is nicer. <clears throat> it's like magnesium or something. <laughs> I don't know what it is. So uh, hey, thanks for checking out our video. I hope that was helpful for you, and we'll see you on the next one. Let's go All right. On. Good job. That was a lot of talking. Oh, yeah, thanks. I'm probably going to have to cut a lot of that out. <laughs>